Hello everyone. Welcome to Techies on Wheel. Today we will discuss about Bot User Guide. We'll see what is Bot User Guide, why is this document important, and how to draft it. So this tutorial is going to be a complete guide on this particular document. Let's get started. Let's first understand what is Bot User Guide. So like any user guide, user guide means that it's suggest user what to do and how to do for that specific uh, whatever it is guided it is a guide for right similarly the bot user guide guides the any of the end user after a developer has completed the development or in mid it has it is handing over to some other developer or in production post production even to the support guys in future who is going to refer to this document will have absolute idea on to what this bot is how this functions and how to use this bot in future so this uh, bot user guide is a document which is drafted by developers and even in some organization it's a business analyst who uh, who collaborate with developer to document this particular user guide to capture the details around the bot so that anyone can refer this document in future or uh, and this is also used for support handover. So when we talk about it, it gives a complete picture of the bot, what details it includes are first, like any standard document, the version control and the document uh, stakeholder information. The second thing which it contains is, the, is a, on a very high level, the RPA process detail, what this process is about. Again, this section can be just copied from the uh, PDD process design document or the solution design document. Uh, then the bot management details, we'll discuss about these topics in detail once we walk through the document, but just on high level, bot management details are more of how we are managing the bot, how it is being triggered, how is it, is it, it is scheduled, who is managing the pass, passwords. So these kind of details are there, which we maintain in this document as well. The fourth one is on the process management details, like if there is any input file which needs to come, which what are the dependencies and who is going to manage on the process level those details comes here and then the most important one is the attachment so if you think that any supporting document you have which will help anyone referring the bot or uh, the document in future you should ideally attach all those documents in the supporting document section so uh, bot user guide serves as a kind of go-to document for any of the user bot user may be may it be client, support team, or the next developer who is going to take handover from the existing developer uh, for any of the bot details, prerequisite dependencies, or any detail required for the bot. Now let's have a look onto how exactly this bot user guide looks like. Like any of the standard document, very first thing you specify is what this document is. This is a bot user guide, hence I specified that it's a bot user guide, then followed by the name of the customer. If it's a bank, then that name come, needs to come here or, or it's a specific team or any other customer, whatever the name is, that needs to be specified. Uh, then followed by the process name. Again, this is for reference that which customer, which process this bot user guide is for. And then followed by the version that, which is the version one is referring to. Why this is important is, uh, just in case anyone knows, okay, it's the version three, which was the latest unapproved one. And the one we are referring, is it version three or not? So that's the kind of reference it, it helps for. Then let's have a look onto the table of content. Uh, this is again the same, which we discussed in the earlier PPT. Very first thing is document control uh, with the details. Then uh, digital workforce process. It's the process design document process, which we talked about the bot management details, process management details, and the attachments. Now let's have a deep dive look onto each of these topics. The document control is very standard like any other document. It has details of author, like who has uh, developed um, this particular document. <clears throat> so in the author section, the name of the developer or the business analyst will come here with the role and which date this document was created followed by the version control. So if it was on this date um, and version 1.0 was the initial draft, then it, it might have gone revisions after review from the solution architect or maybe uh, after suggestions from client or so, so and, and so forth. So those versions needs to come here. Then who are the target business users? The stakeholders we are talking about, maybe the process owner or the SMEs you have been interacting. So that if in case anyone wants to refer in future, 
who was the process owner, who was the SME one has interacted with to create this particular process or bot, th this section can be helpful. Then the next one is on digital workforce process. This is very similar to what ha would have been provided by business analyst at the initial level, identifying a very high level RPA process, uh, which also should include the triggers and results. So it should come ideally from your SDD document, which is solution design document. It You can just paste the, uh, paste the uh, flow which was created or one would have created in SDD here. So it, need not, it needs not to be created from scratch. The third one is bot management. Now this is very important uh, here on. It Bot management describes that whether your bot is attended or unattended bot and what all needs to be kept in picture while, uh, uh, while anyone is referring the bot in future. For example, the bot characteristics. If there are bot IDs which has been created, then what is the name of that bot ID? Uh, and then the description. For example, if there are three applications, three web applications which is involved in this automation, then there would be three bot IDs followed by the bot names. And then you can just put in description that, okay, this bot ID is for this application. This is for this second application and third application. Similarly, if it's uh, if there is any Windows ID credential or email ID or machine ID credentials, uh, then the name of those IDs needs to be here. Then the second one is on bot dependencies, which means that if it if there is any dependency dependencies on any other bot that uh, the first bot needs to run post that only the second bot should get triggered or any other kind of dependencies for example the input file needs to be present in the input directory uh, then that should also be called out clearly here then the third one is on bot password management it describes how the passwords are being managed, whether it's in the credential vault and uh, whether it's in CyberArk, who is managing that password or how frequent that password needs to be updated. So those kind of password management details needs to come here. The another section which we talked about was on process management. When we talk about process management, like we discussed about as it is important to mention how the password is being maintained, but similarly, if there is an input file which has been drafted or which has been carved out, there is a template which has been carved out and operations has been suggested that you need to feed input to the bot in the specific format with specific columns, then that needs to be described here. Okay, like example, what are the process triggers, how the input file should be, where this input file is placed, and then the description of those paths. Then there there can be n number of paths and we ideally take uh, input from the config file. Now the config file is something, uh, it's a configuration file we are talking about. So anything which is dynamic, we want to keep it outside or we don't want to hard code it in the bot. Hence we keep those values in a uh, external file or maybe external place where if in future it changes, it can be directly changed uh, those information or those inputs can be directly changed without interrupting the bot or the code. Uh, ideally, we use the XML files, but now uh, in most of the organization, and it is suggested that we use the inbuilt uh, application inbuilt config file, uh, config uh, place, so that we can manage the configuration there itself in the control room or the orchestrator rather than placing a separate external file. Uh, so in config settings, uh, there can be any number of things like we discussed, it can be dynamic. So we, uh, for example, the uh, config outlook configurations or the public holidays, it differ bank to bank, right? And if, every year the dates would change. So those kind of informations you need to capture here that what are the names of the uh, such dynamic values, which is being maintained in the config file and the description around those. The next one is on process dependencies. For example, if you have your process is dependent on any other process, uh, there can be that there are three, uh, three LOP, uh, three, uh, there can be that there are more than one team which is working on the same process and the work is segregated team by team and you are maybe automating part of a second team. And now the second team work will only start once the first team work is complete. So that's the kind of process dependencies we are talking about. And that needs to be clearly called out that, okay, if 
if say team A has to generate the file first and post that itself, the second process can start or begin, then that needs to be called out so that in future anything happens, everyone has clear idea on what could have been the possible uh, failure reasons. The uh, another subsection around it is the password management. We discussed earlier as well. It is important to mention who is managing the passwords. Now this contains the details on broader level, uh, sorry, on the minute level. For example, if there are uh, three applications we have taken consideration here, SAP, CRM, and just a dummy ABC applications, then the user IDs for those applications needs to be called out. And then the description that where is that password being managed? Is it in credential vault and how frequent it gets expired? or is it being read directly from AD, so nothing needs to be done, or any such specification which you think as a developer or a business analyst will be helpful for anyone uh, in future. Now, why this is important is that if someone uh, knows that, okay, password is there, but just to just imagine that someone in future going and referring uh, and wondering how, when this needs to be changed or how frequent is the bot credential uh, requires to be changed uh, this is exactly where it will be helpful for them then the another subsection is process execution uh, it means how the bot runs so you need to describe here any special or any uh, any call outs which is very specific to the bot run from maybe control room or orchestrator, for example, the frequency of the bot. When we talk about frequency, the, every bot run differ uh, from one to another. There can be a daily bot run, there can be a monthly, bi-weekly or yearly bot run. So you need to specify what's the frequency of bot run. And even on daily, it can be specifications that it needs to run maybe one time a day, or uh, two times a day, three times a day, or it can be basis, the number of times file is being placed in the input file. So any kind of trigger or frequency you think of, uh, you your bot is following, that needs to be called out here clearly. And the last section which we talked about, about the attachments. So uh, anything which you, any of the document which you think can be referred or and will be important for anyone who is referring to the bot in future, try to place all those attachments here so that someone can directly access it from one place rather than visiting a number of places, finding all the details for the bot. This is how exactly this is very important. The bot user guide is important and will be helpful for everyone. So now we know that how important the bot user guide is as it serves as a go-to document for anyone, be it the client, support team, or anyone who is referring to the bot in future. Uh, this particular document itself can act as a complete guide to know each and every detail of the bot. So what next? In the next video, we'll discuss about the RP release note. We'll again discuss the same thing in detail and we'll also let you know how to draft it. Till then, keep learning, keep growing, stay happy and stay healthy. Thank you, everyone.